Um, hello po, good afternoon sa lahat. Kamusta po kayo? Parang wala tayong energy ah. Woo! Lord, thank you Lord. Friday na naman, kaya Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Tayo manalangin muna bago tayo mag-umpisa na ano, uh, lumapit sa presensya ng Lord. Mabuti na umpisahan natin ang lahat ng ating umpisahan sa panalangin. Sige po, manalangin po muna tayo. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Panginoon, patuloy ka po namin itinataas. Panginoon, hallelujah. Patuloy ka po namin dinadakila. Panginoon, itinataas ang tun- ang iyong pinakamataas na pangalan, Panginoon, Lord. Hallelujah. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa pagkakataon na ito, Lord, na inyo pong ibinigay sa amin, Lord, na magpuri, magbigay ng pasasalamat, Panginoon, Lord, sa lahat, Panginoon, Lord, God, ng inyo pong nagawa sa aming buhay, Panginoon, Lord. Lord, kami po humihingi ng kapatawaran, Lord, God, sa amin po mga pagkakasalang nagawa, Lord, sa, na hindi po uh, karapat, na hindi po kaaya-aya sa inyong harapan. Lord, kami po ipatawarin mo Pagkalinisin niyo po kami ng inyong banal na dugo, Panginoon. Lord, hallelujah, kayo lamang po ang maitaas ngayong araw na ito sa amin pong pag-aawitan, Lord, sa amin pong um, pagkakantahan, pagsasayawan, Panginoon, Lord God, to bring, uh, to give all the glory to your name, Panginoon Jesus. Hallelujah. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit move in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Panginoon, uh, balutin po, Lord God, nawa ng inyong banal na spirito, Panginoon, Lord, ang ang lugar na ito, Panginoon, Lord God. Hallelujah. Maraming maraming salamat po. Panginoon, tangin kayo lamang po ang maitaas sa lugar na ito, Panginoon, sa pangalan po ng inyong anak na sa Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Panginoon. Naniniwala na po tayo na ang Diyos natin ay buhay. Nakaya niya tayong iligtas. Our Redeemer gives. Ang tunay ko yun, ito ako ay naniniwala pa tayo. Yun, hallelujah. So, kung naniniwala tayo, sabay-sabay tayo ang mata ng my Redeemer gives. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, una, ito ikaw ay buhay, Panginoon. Kaya kami kumintas. Hallelujah. Rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe him. I believe him. My shame has taken away. And my pain is filled in his name. I believe him. I believe him.
Present, O oh God. For indeed, Lord, in every aspect of the word freedom, O oh God, once the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has set us free, then we are free indeed. Amen. So let's um, sit down, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now we are on the second week of May. Amen. We have seen how God works in our midst, amen? You have seen how God worked this week with us. 
um, it is written in the Word of God, Jesus said that uh, even up to this day, and I believe even up to this day, our Father God in heaven is not finished working. He is still working. Amen? Amen? And, um, you know, I am so excited because starting today, we are going to start a new series of uh, preaching. We are going to study the, bo- the book of um, or the letter of Paul to the Philippians. So I would encourage everyone, if you are feeling sleepy, if you are feeling sleepy, if you are feeling something negative in you, drive it out in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, can you join me in a, in a short, uh, short prayer? And let's all down bar our, our heads. As we are still in the presence, as we are still in the, in the shall I say, the emotions, we are still in the spiritual um, high, not just emotional high, because the word of God says uh, he is looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's what we did earlier. So now we are getting ready to hear the word of God. Children, we are going to pray. We are going to pray, okay? Father God in heaven, again in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, we ask, oh Father God, for your guidance for each one of us, O oh Lord. Let each ear, O oh Lord, be an attentive ear, O oh God. Let each heart, O oh Lord, be a fertile heart, O oh God, that will receive your words. Lord, even if today, O oh God, we will receive the introduction to Philippians, O oh God, we know, Lord, that every time your word is read, O God, every time your word is flushed in the screen, we know, O God, that there is power. We know, O Lord, that there will be healing. We know, O God, that there will be deliverance. We know, O Lord, that you will do mighty things in our midst, O God. And even, Lord, it will transcend, O God, even to those, who, O Lord, who will hear about your words in, in the next few days, in next month, in the past, in the next years, O God, we believe, Lord, Your word has power, O God. And so, Lord, help us, Lord, to understand your word today, O God. And most of all, O Lord, according to James, help us, O Lord, to apply your words in our lives, O God. Thank you, Father God. This is our prayer in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, in the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, it is my immense pleasure to introduce our speaker, our preacher for today. Um, who, who is none other than our senior pastor. And so I would encourage each one of you, since we are starting, embarking on a new series, on a new journey, if you haven't been um, taking your notes like the Bereans before, you can start anew, di ba? That's, that's the beauty in our God. His love and mercy are new every morning and every afternoon, of course, every, daily. So if you really want to embark in a spiritual journey so that you're, Your growth will be like this. Okay, everyone wants this. Can you do this? Yeah, let my growth be like this. Not like this and definitely not like that, okay? So we will grow as a church. We will grow as one body. So I would like to welcome Pastor Aldrin, please. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Ganda yung music background. Ayan nyo lang. Ayan mo lang yung music background. Habang nagpipreach. Uh, nasa yun na yung ano, bro? Right? Uh, good and blessed afternoon, everyone. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good afternoon, sisters, brother. Hello, brother Josh. Sister uh, Lisel. Uh, Jeff, everyone, a good and blessed afternoon to everyone. Okay na, bro? Ah, sige, okay. So as Pastor Joan said, we are going to embark on a, uh, and it's not a new journey, but uh, because what we're doing is we, in our preaching, we are doing a series of preaching. Uh, uh, we started from the book of Galatians and then the book of Ephesians. So last week, we finished the uh, last chapter of the book of Ephesians, which talks about the armor of God. So you remember 
Brother Kenneth with all his uh, props, armor, warrior in here, in front. So that's all about the armor of God. And now we're going to talk about... Okay na, bro? Okay na? Ayan. Now, we're going to talk about uh, the book of Philippians. So this is another series that we're going to start. The book of Philippians. So what we're trying to do is we're not trying to uh, reach topic per topic. Because what happens when we preach topic per topic is somehow uh, depending on on how we you know we want to convey the message sometimes we take the, the verses out of context that's why we want to preach in series so we are always in context so we understand what the, the author originally meant when he wrote the scripture so now we will start with the book of Philippians and by the way again for all of you and for uh, those who are uh, listening watching with us uh, online in the internet so our church is Jesus the Resurrected King International Ministry uh, J.R. King for short no? Jesus so we call it J.R. King yeah, J.R. King for short and this is okay. good and blessed afternoon everyone Welcome to J.R. King Church. And this is the mission and vision of our church. The mission of our church is to facilitate the growth of relationship to God of every living soul that God will entrust to J.R. King. So basically, this is what was said in Matthew 28, verse 19. No? Uh, the Great Commission, as we call it, as we used to say, uh, where the Lord Jesus said, Go ye. Go and preach the gospel. So we are we should be a facilitator, each and every one of us, not only the one who is standing here, but everyone should be a facilitator so that everyone will have a good relationship. I mean we have will have a growth of their relationship to God. Okay, and if we do this, we will have our vision, which is to have a congregation with a strong relationship with God that is full of the Holy Spirit and love for one another. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Sister Kat? Okay na po. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will also time myself. Okay, so praise the Lord. Now, as I said, what we're going to talk about for today is going to be taken from the book of Philippians. And please join me in prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of our God. For our God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity. I personally thank you. For this privilege, Lord, to stand here before these people, these wonderful people, Lord God, your church, Lord, to stand before them and to deliver your message. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, enlighten us. Because, Lord, in, in my own self, in my own, Lord, I cannot do anything. But with your empowerment, Lord, we will be able to do everything and we will be able to understand your words, Father. So help us, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, enlighten your word and Lord we rebuke all the works of the enemy in this place no works of the enemy shall ever prosper Father God but only your will our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so we thank you for it this we pray in your mighty name our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen and Amen praise be to God so as I said the message for today is about the book of Philippians although I'm not going to preach about the book of Philippians itself but I'm going to introduce to you the book of Philippians. That's that's how I'm going to preach today. Uh, after this, series of preacher will stand here and talk about series of verses from the book of Philippians. So, I'm going to preach to you an introduction about the book of Philippians. Okay? First, the author of the book of Philippians is not, none other than Apostle Paul. Okay. Uh, the theme, the theme of Book of Philippians is ultimate joy in living for Christ. So remember that, especially those who's, who's going to uh, be preaching, you no, know, uh, Friday after Friday. This is the theme of the Book of Philippians: ultimate joy in living for Christ. When was it written? It was written somewhere between AD 62 and 63 okay it was written 
for the city of Philippi in eastern Macedonia. Who know where who knows where Macedonia is? Anyone? Kuya Gav knows. Okay, later we will see. Huh? If that's right, Kuya Gav. So, Macedonia is 10 miles inland from the IGNC. Have you heard about IGNC? No, during the uh, this war in Ukraine, uh, we, we heard this no, because this is the access to the Black Sea. So, the Russian fleet comes through the IGNC and pass by Turkey to go to Black Sea. Okay. Uh, Philippi was named after King Philip II of Macedon, which is the father of Alexander the Great. So these are just some trivia, okay? We're talking about Philippi. Philippi is the, not Philippines, Philippi. Philippi is the city where the Philippian church lives or resides, okay? In Paul's day, it was an honored Roman city and a military post. Philippi. No? Ayan. So, I don't know if you can see from here, uh, medyo malabo kasi, no? It's not that clear. But later, I have something that is more clear. So, this is Macedonia. Okay? This area over here. Macedonia is actually in Greece. And this is Philippi. That red uh, circle, encircled red, red over there. That's Philippi. And that is where the Philippian church is or are. That's where they are. Okay? Now here, para mas makarelate. So we can relate. I took a Google map. So that box area over there is where Israel is. Okay? So that is where Jerusalem is. So that star is Galatia. Galatia, we remember in our series of preaching about the book of Galatians. So Galatia is located in Turkey. So that is Turkey, no? Where in the map, the one I'm showing to you. And then this is Ephesus. Ephesus is where the book of Philippians was written for. Now Ephesus is also in Turkey. So that is Ephesus. So remember we started with the book of Galatians, then the book of Ephesians. Okay, now we are in the book of Philippians. And this is Macedonia, where Philippi is. And that is Philippi, where the book of Philippians was written for, for the, the Philippian church. Okay, that's Philippi. So, so from Turkey, modern day now Turkey, Apostle Paul moved to Greece, to Philippi, to uh, share the word of God there. And from there, the church of Philippi, which is called the Philippians, uh, started. Now, we are going to discuss how it started. Okay? So, the church of Philippi was founded by Paul and his team of co-workers. It's not only Paul. He has a team of co-workers with him. One is Silas. The other one is Timothy. And the third one is Luke. Luke is... Uh, the one who wrote the uh, book of Acts. Okay? On his second missionary journey in response to a God-given mission at Troas, we will see that in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 40. So, our topic is about the book of Philippians, but our, our verse will be taken from the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 19 to 40. Why? Because it is there where the accounts how the the Philippian church started that is where it was discussed in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 9 to 40 because the book of Philippians uh, it's it's a letter of Apostle Paul while he was in prison or while he is in prison Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the Philippian church and that is the book of Philippians and now we are going to discuss how the Philippian church started. And that we can see from Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 40. Okay. But first, let's discuss about the purpose. The purpose why Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians. From prison, because he's in prison, 
uh, you will see that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 7 and uh, verse 13 and 14 most likely he was in Rome no? while he was in prison in Rome may kita rin natin in Acts chapter 28 verse 16 to 31 Paul wrote to the Philippian Christians to thank them for the, their generous gift brought to him by Epaphroditus that is in Philippians chapter 4 verse 14 to 19 and also to update them on the present circumstances, how he is doing, how Paul is doing. In this letter, Paul assured the congregation that God's purposes were being worked out through his imprisonment while he was in prison. Now, he is trying to assure them. Why? Because later we will see. He also reassured the church, the Philippian church, that their messenger, Epaphroditus, because they sent Epaphroditus to Apostle Paul to give him gifts, had fulfilled this mission faithfully and was not returning to them before he had served as fully as possible. Makita natin in Philippians chapter 2, verse 25 to 30. Because when Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians, the letter to the Philippians, uh, Epaphroditus was there with him. Overall, Paul encouraged the Philippian church to press on in their relationship with Christ and to grow in unity and humility, joy, so this is the purpose why Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians. Unlike many of Paul's letters, like the Galatians and the Ephesians, the book of Philippians was not written specifically to address church problems. It's not to address church problems. But although there are church problems, but very minor or complex its basic tone or feeling is one of gracious affection and appreciation for the congregation. Makita natin from the greeting, from the first verse, up to the closing, the last verse from Philippians chapter 4 verse 23, because the book of Philippians has only four chapters. Maikli lang, no? It has, it's very short. It only has four chapters. So from the first verse to the last verse, it's all about the joy of Apostle Paul. The letter focuses in Christ Jesus as the purpose for living, the source of joy, and the hope for eternal life for all who follow Him. <clears throat> so basically, Apostle Paul is very joyful and he's trying to encourage the Philippian church. However, Paul does address three minor problems in Philippi. Okay? Philippi, again, is the, the area, no? So like, for example, Manila, and the people are Manilenos, no? because I'm from Manila, so I'm a Manileno. So they're from Philippi, so the people are Philippians, right? First problem is, some were discouraged over his extended time in prison because they love Apostle Paul, but Apostle Paul has been in prison for a long time already. That's why they sent Apaproditus to go to Apostle Paul to visit him in prison and to give him some gifts. Okay? So they were feeling discouraged already. That's why Apostle Paul is encouraging them. Hi, sister. Anak mo yan, sister? Ah, praise the Lord. So, <laughs> I thought it's, his, it's her daughter. Okay. So, then second, there was tension and disunity between two women in the church. Wow. Wow. Talaga itong mga marites. Hindi, <laughs> joke lang, joke lang. So, there, <laughs> there was tension in, and disunity between two women in the church. Now, I'm not going to discuss about that two women, but it's going to be discussed by those preachers who will be preaching about the book of Philippians, okay? Who had previously served with Paul. And third, there was constant threat of Paul's teacher coming from two extremes. There are two extremes of constant threat of Paul's teachers. Okay? And what, what are those? One, those who claim that in addition to faith in Christ, people must follow certain legal requirements in order to gain a spiritual salvation. So, in theology, this, are, this is called legalist. No? So they're saying, <clears throat> okay, it's good you have faith, but that's enough. That's not enough. Faith is not enough to, to, to attain salvation. 
you need to do this. You need to circumcise. You need to uh, observe the Sabbath. You need to do this. You need to do that. So your faith is not enough. As if they are saying that it's okay, sister. As if as if they are saying that the Lord Jesus Christ's death and resurrection is not enough to save us. They're saying no, that's not enough. The Lord Jesus Christ that you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. Yes, that's good, but that's not enough. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do that also to be saved. That's what they're saying. They're becoming legalists, no? And then the second one is those who believe that since salvation comes by God's grace through faith, we can ignore God's moral laws. It will be discussed in the book of Philippians chapter 3. In theology, in theology, in theological terms, this type of people are called the antinomians. No, sila yung mga antinomians. Kilala ni uh, Brad Ronel to eh. Or they are against the law or into libertiness, people who are unrestrained morally. So, who they, who, who are they? Sila yung mga, they, they're saying like, okay, the Bible, yes, the Bible, we believe it's the Word of God. But because now I'm a believer, because the Spirit of God is in me, so what I, whatever I say is like God talking through me. No? So, they, they have, I know, uh, it's like uh, uh, if whatever I say it's equivalent to what God said no? they're like that they are they're saying that because I have faith in Christ I don't need to follow the moral laws the, the, the moral law has already been instilled unto me so I don't need to basically I don't need to follow the Bible anymore that's what they're saying so those are the two extremes uh, that are constantly uh, Paul's uh, concentrate of Paul's teaching in the Philippian churches. Okay? Now, as I said, we're going to discuss about how the Philippian church came to being. Okay? And this can be found in the book of Acts chapter 16 verses 9 to 40. So that's what we're going to do. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 9 and 10, during the night, it says, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Paul had a vision during the night. How many of you had a vision before? Ate Sam had. She raised her hand. Sa in Tagalog, pangitain, di ba? So, during the night, Paul had a vision of a, Macedonia, of a Macedonian man begging him to come over to Macedonia to help them. And in verse 10, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia. So, who, who are those we? We said, those we is composed of Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. Okay? So, four people. Those we are composed of four people. And here, you can see, they said, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. You can see from here, I highlighted that concluding that God had called us. So, who had the vision? It was Paul. Okay? But from the words concluding that God had called us, meaning they had an agreement, they had a discussion. Right? It's like they had a meeting. Like what we did in the hotel, right? We had a meeting. We agreed, we talked, and concluded. That's what they did. Paul had a vision, and they discussed it among themselves. And finally, they concluded that God is calling them to Macedonia to preach the gospel. Right? So that's what they did. So they left from where they are. And that will be discussed. It's my... Uh, it's not working. Ayun. Okay. So, next verse. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight from for Samothrace. And the next day, we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, which is a Roman colony and a leading city 
of that district of Macedonia and we stayed there several days. So, meaning, the group, Paul, Timothy, Silas, and Luke, they were in Troas. So, from Troas, they sailed to Samothrace. From Samothrace, they traveled to Neapolis. Then, finally, they arrived at Philippi. Which, according to this, the Word of God, that Philippi was a leading Roman colony at that time in the district of Macedonia, meaning in Greece. Okay? So, now, let's go back to our map. According to the accounts in Acts chapter 16, they were in Troas. Okay? So, Troas is where? Troas is in this area. It's still in the part of Greece. Ah, sorry. Uh, Turkey. Yes po. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise. Thank you, sister. God bless you. So they were in Troas at that time. Do, when when Paul had a vision during the night, they were in, they were in Troas. They were in uh, ano nga ito? Turkey. They were in Turkey during our mod, modern times. No, they were in Troas, and then they said they sailed from Troas to Samothrace. Samothrace is there, you no? Know? You can see from here because my pointer is not working. So from the star to Samothrace, they, there is a water, there is a body of water, right? So they need to sail from Troas to Samothrace. That's why they said, we sailed, we sailed. That's why they said, uh, from Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. That's what they said, no? From Samothrace. Then when they arrived at Samothrace, they traveled to Neapolis. Indianapolis. <laughs> Neapolis. They traveled to Neapolis, and from Neapolis, they arrive at their destination, Philippi. Okay, so now, the group are in Philippi. What do you think are they doing there now? They said they had the vision, right? That a man, not a woman, huh? a man was calling them to help them. So what do, what do you think they would do next? They would look for, because if it's you, maybe you will look for a man, right? No? <laughs> because what they did, actually, when they arrived at Philippi, in verse 13, it says, On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. So, it, because it's a Sabbath day, so they're looking for a, a place of prayer. Right? And we sat down and began to speak to the woman who had gathered there. Diba, the vision said it was a man who was calling. Diba? Why are they look? They sat down and talked to a woman. Diba? But it's it's all planned, no? It's all by the grace of God. Okay? So, they arrive at Philippi. It's a Sabbath day and they look for a place of prayer. And they saw a place of prayer and there were women there. They sat with the woman and started talking to them. That's how you evangelize. That's how you evangelize. You sit with them and start talking to them. Right? Simple as that. That's how you evangelize. And then in verse 14, one of those listening, so meaning there were many of them, right? But one of those listening was a woman from the city of Theatira named Lydia. Remember this name, Lydia, okay? Because this name, Lydia, is a key name in the book of Philippians. Right? Later, I will come back to, his, to, to her name. Or maybe, hindi na. So, Lydia is actually where the church of uh, the Philippian church started. Okay? It is where the Philippian church started. So, Lydia is a dealer in purple cloth. Sinang may purple cloth dito? I can see purple ba yan, uh, Sister Roslyn? Yung damin mo, purple ba yan? Ah, si, si ano? 
si ate Charlotte saka si Kaya Richard. Maroon ba yan? Colorblind na ata ako. <laughs> so, sino may purple dito? Wala. So, because, you, you know, during that time, purple clothing is an expensive type of clothing during that time. Because it's for royalty. What would you believe that? It's for royalty. That's why the status of Lydia, no, is a, uh, uh, she's a rich girl. Kumbaga, Donya. Donya Lydia. You will see, because she has a big uh, house that can accommodate people as well. Okay? So the word said, a dealer in purple cloth. Purple cloth meaning, uh, this is for royalty, so she's selling purple cloth to royalty. So that's why she is uh, mayaman, rich, no? And she was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her, opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. That's the key, actually. As you can see, no? Be, even before they heard the message from Apostle Paul, the, bo- the Word of God says she was a worshiper of God. So it's possible that you are already worshiping God even though you haven't heard the message. But the Lord opened her heart and to respond to Paul's message. And that's the key. That's why I put it there. An open heart for God's word is the key to believing. Because if our heart is not open for God's word, then it, we will have problem believing. Like in the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 11, you'll find there the Bereans. No? Uh, the Bible says the Bereans are of more noble character. Why? Because after hearing the word from Apostle Paul, what do they do? They study the scripture to see if what Paul was, was saying, was, was telling them what is true. And that should be our um, attitude as well, like the Bereans, to see what I'm telling is true. Okay? We have to study. Okay? So, Lydia, the Lord opened Lydia's heart to respond to Paul's message. Now, in verse 15, when she and the member of her household were baptized, she invited us to to her home and said, Lydia said, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house and she persuaded us. Now, can you just pause for a while and Look at this verse. Magulo, di ba? It's, uh, ano ba yung magulo sa English? Huh? Okay, yes. <laughs> confusing. Uh, it's confusing, right? Because the, the word said, when she and the members of her household were baptized. Okay. They were baptized. And then, that's the, they're inviting Paul to their home. Okay? So that's why I put the quest, <clears throat> Question. Who believed first? Lydia or her household? When when were they baptized? Sabi kasi, when she and the members of her household were baptized. So when were they baptized? It's clear, Apostle Paul, the group, has not been to, the, to Lydia's house yet. How is it that they, they have been already baptized? And then, how was it that her household were baptized when Paul and company had not yet been on their home. Okay? So we are having, maybe some of us are having problem because when we hear the word, Hello, baby. Ano pong pangalan niya? Asleya. Hi, how are you? Ilan tawag na siya? Two? Hi. That's okay. So, we are having problem because when we hear the word baptize, almost instantly we think water baptism. But not, that's not water baptism what is being discussed here. Okay? Let's look at this. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18. It says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This is the, uh, what do you call this? Uh, Great Commission, right? Then in verse 16, whoever believes and is, and is baptized will be saved. Now, if 
if the word is talking about the word of God is talking about water baptism so that means those who believe but were not water baptized is not saved right because the condition is whoever believes and is baptized right but actually but what was meant by baptized there was the receiving of the holy spirit that is the meaning of baptized when you believe you will instantly receive the holy spirit okay i will just continue the verse in 17 and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands in sick people on sick people and they will get well because we have already received the holy spirit that is what was meant by the word baptized there okay look in galatians chapter 3 verse 2 what did paul said i would like to learn just one thing from you did you receive the spirit by the word of the law or by believing what you heard so basically apostle paul was saying hey did you receive the holy spirit by following the law by doing or by believing what you heard because apostle paul is telling them that you receive the holy spirit the moment you believe in in verse 5 galatians chapter 3 verse 5 so again i ask does god give you the spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law so by being just by being obedient by being by doing uh doing things on your own do you receive the holy spirit no by you believing what you heard that's why if we go back to the verse no so the right i think i put it here no later so let's discuss first galatians chapter 3 verse 2 i would like to learn just one thing from you did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard okay binasa na natin to now look at this first corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 to 13 it says just as a body though one has many parts no this body is one body but it has many parts two feet two fingers two eyes one nose two ears no it has many parts so is a christian we are all christian and one body that's why we're called the body of christ but we are many members no just as a body though though one has many parts but all of its many parts form one body so it is with christ and in verse 13 it says for we were all baptized by one spirit we were all baptized by one spirit it means the moment you believe we believe we were all baptized there is no discrimination we were all baptized the moment you believe what you heard no so as to form one body whether jews or gentiles slave or free there's no distinction we were all baptized the moment we believe we are not baptized only when you speak in tongues no it's just a manifestation it's a gift but when the moment we believe we baptize the baptism means receiving the holy spirit no um given we were and we were all given the one spirit to drink even so the body is not made up of one part but of many okay and in galatians chapter 3 verse 10 it says for, for all who rely yes baby <laughs> for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse as it is written <laughs> as it is written tingnan niyo to ha sabe uh, li- listen to this okay those who rely on the works of the law what does that mean if there is a law so what you need to do you have to abide right by the law so those who rely on the works of the law are under a curse why because none of us can abide in every single law 
if there is thousand law, we cannot abide them all. Uh, failure in one is a failure in all. Okay? That's why the Bible says, Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything in the book of the law. In order to be righteous, if, you, if your righteousness reference is the law, then you have, if there is a million law, then you have to do all those million laws. You cannot even break just one. If you break just one, then you are a lawbreaker. Lawbreaker means you are a sinner. Yes, you are a sinner. That's why in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11, Apostle Paul is saying, Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. No one who relies on the law, because if you relies on the law for your righteousness, then that only means that Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, because no one can attain righteousness through the law. Because you will only be able to attain righteousness through the law if you are able to continue to follow all the law, through and through. Right? But none can do that except the Lord Jesus. Okay? And in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, it says, For sin shall no longer be your master. <laughs> okay. So, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Okay? So, sin shall no longer be your master. So, if sin is your master, that means you are, Apostle Paul is saying that you are a slave to sin. Correct? Because sin is your master. Why? Because the Jews, okay, the Jews, they are inclined to follow the law. For them, no, for them, the law is their righteousness. The, for them, the law is their righteousness. They are inclined to follow the law. Okay? That's why the Apostle Paul is saying, for sin shall no longer be your master. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. And see in John chapter 8, verse 34 to 36, Jesus replied, He said, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sin is a slave to sin. Everyone who sin is a slave to sin. Meaning everyone who breaks the law is a slave to sin. Basically a slave to the law that they are following. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family but the son belongs to it forever so if the son sets you free you will be free indeed ito yung diba Bible sa atin nadaanan din natin to. so now look at what Apostle Paul is saying and the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus is saying Jesus replied very truly I tell you everyone who sin is a slave to sin right everyone who is sinning is a slave to sin the reference is the law because they become conscious that they are sinning because of the law. Before, there were no law. But it doesn't mean that there's no sin. But when the law was given, the sin was magnified. Because by breaking the law, you have come to know that you are sinning. Now, because the Jews, their, their righteousness is in the law, and because they cannot 100% follow the law, so they have become a slave to sin. You got me? Because they they are not able to follow uh, to to obey the law hundred percent. But and Apostle Paul says, "For sin shall no longer be your master. Sin shall no longer be your master. Why? Because you are not under the law anymore. No, because you are not under the law anymore. No, because the Lord Jesus Christ have." freed you from the law. You are not anymore under the law, but because you are now under grace. That's why the Bible says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. That's, that means you are not anymore bound by the law. But that doesn't mean that you are not going to follow the law. No? But before I followed the law, from myself but now because I have faith I I obey the law because of my faith no 
So, because we are not under the law, but we are under grace. Okay, so, when she and the... Okay, we have read this already, okay? So, the correct sequence is this. Ito yung nangyari. This is what happened, okay? Lydia believed the words of God that she heard from Paul and Tim. And because she believed, she was she were baptized. After that, she went home and Lydia shared the words that he received to the members of her household and they were baptized. So that's why the Bible says when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. No, Then that's the time she invited them, the group, to their home and said, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house and she persuaded us. Okay? And in verse 16, once we were going... Again, so another ano na, another story na. In verse 16, once we, we are going to the place of prayer, again, they want to go to a place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had the spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. So there, there is a female who can predict the future because of the spirit in her. Okay? In Dax, okay, this is what we read. This girl was a median in contact with demons that could predict the future. Now, if we read in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 to 12, there are many uh, occult practices there that uh, the Word of God is telling us not to follow. Okay, in verse 9 it says, When you enter the land of the Lord, your God is giving you do not learn do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there let no one be found among you who sacrifice their son and daughters in fire who practices divination or sorcery interprets omen okay interprets omen uh, like horoscope sino pa sa inyo naniniwala sa horoscope that's the interpretation of omen okay so don't believe that anymore, okay? Well, sabihin nyo, paglabas mo, meron kang ganun. Di ba, ganun yung mga sa horoscope, di ba? Before, I also believed that, but now, no. So, don't believe that anymore. Okay, Inter- those who interpret omens, engage in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium, medium, medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of this, same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. So these are the nine detestable practices of the Canaanites. No, these are the their nine detestable practices. Okay, so don't believe in horoscope anymore, huh? Now in in verse seventeen to nineteen, she followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, "These men are servants of the Most High God." Who are telling you the way to be saved? So, see, he's she is an ano ah? She has a spirit, an evil spirit that can predict the future. But she is agreeing to Apostle Paul. She said, "These men are servants of the Most High God." So, what does that mean? Is that really uh, an evil spirit? Maybe you will say, hmm, maybe it's not an evil spirit because the evil spirit is actually telling the people to follow. Apostle Paul. Right? Or no? Of course, no. The answer is no. Question, why would an evil spirit advertise the competition? Competition because evil versus good. Right? So, But why would that spirit say, these men are servants of the Most High God and follow them? No? Most likely, to confuse the issue. Pagan religions of the day commonly referred to a most high God. Because the pagan religions, they have they, they refer to a God, they, they name the most high God, who was just one of their many gods. So the fortune teller was not necessarily referring to the one true God. No, So that's why if you hear someone, oh, oh our God is the same. Si, yung Diyos ng mga nandirito sa bansa na to, no? si A. Saka si Yahweh are the same. No, that's not. No? Then, in addition, coming from the lips of a diviner, 
Her testimony might suggest one could believe in the God of Paul, in the God Paul preached, and yet continue involvement in idolatry and a cult. Parang sinasabi niya, indirectly, she is trying to side with Paul so that people will think that she is also godly. No, that that uh, female person with an evil spirit. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, remember our Bible study, you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Diba? This is for, uh, according to dun sa tatlong work na pinag-aralan natin, diba? evangelism, um, casting out of uh, demon influences, and healing. So, ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the left her. Okay? Now, I have to go quickly na, ha? Ate Kat, <laughs> pwedeng overtime. <laughs> Then, oh, okay. Then, she followed Paul and And the rest, ah, hindi. Nabasa na natin ito, okay? So, sa susunod verse na tayo, ito. Verse 19. Now, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authority because they were using that female not to earn money. Now, because the spirit was rebuked, now she cannot fortune tell. Now, they're not going to earn any more money. So, what they did, They brought them, the group, uh, Paul, Timothy, Silas, and Luke. They brought them before the magistrate and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs and lawful for us Romans to accept or practice. So, does that mean that they, are, they were violating the, the law? The Apostle Paul? Question. Did Paul and Silas urge people to break the law? Roman law obligated citizens to worship the emperor and the state. That's the truth. That's the truth. No, at that time, that's the Roman law. They are obligated to worship the emperor and the state. Paul called people to worship and serve God alone. No, so in effect, to this extent, they were guilty of threatening the practice of emperor worship through their preaching because they are telling the people to worship God alone. But clearly, the slave girl's owners used these charges as a pretext to stop Paul from interfering with their business interest. No business as usual, eh. pera-pera lang. Eh. No, na because they want to earn. So that's why they, they were angry and they used this pretext to get rid of Paul and Silas in the group. Okay? The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. So now, they are in jail. Right? In Acts verse 24, when he received these orders, you know, the jailer, when the jailer received these orders, he put them in her cell and passing their feet in the stocks. Inner cell. So it, they say the inner cell is the most secured cell because there are many gates to enter before you enter, uh, before you arrive at the inner cell. Okay? And not only that, they passing also their feet. No? The kinadena, yung kanilang mga paa. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Ano kaya yung Uh, what, what do you think are they singing? Maybe they're singing, How great is our God. Huh? Amazing grace. Ganun. Wala pa yun nun, time na yun. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung ano yung, I don't know what, what they were singing or singing hymns, no? But the other prisoners were listening to them. And then what happened? Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open. Wow. All the prison doors flew open. <laughs> no? And everyone's chains came loose. Diba? That's why sometimes when you fear, diba? when you um, 
when you are afraid, you uh, play praise and worship songs, di ba? Then you become all right. No? Then verse 27, the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. That's his integrity. Because he thought the prisoner had escaped, he is in trouble. So, rather than reasoning out, he just wants to take his own life. But what did Paul say? Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. In verse 29, the jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. No, You can imagine what happened. He was about to kill himself. Because he thought all the prisoners escaped. But when Paul said, no, don't harm yourself, we are here. So when they opened the lights, he saw that they were there. So he was terrified. Now, oh, this, this man, they are a good man. No? So he fell. In the rush. So he rushed in and fell in trembling before Paul and Silas. And then he said, he then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? No? Instantly, he knows that these people are man of God. So he asked, what must I do to be saved? Do you ask that question? Or did you ask that question? What must I do to be saved? And Apostle Paul replied, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. See, that is faith, believe. But in Galatians, the Judaizers are saying, that is not enough. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. No, believing is not enough. But the requirement in order to be saved is only to believe. Now, people are saying that, okay, I'm a believer. If I believe, then my whole family will believe. Why? Because the Word of God said so. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. But if you will look at this verse only, that's true. But that's not the context. They will be saved, you and your household. Why? Because in verse 32, it says, they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all others in his house. So meaning, yes, your household will be saved because you will share the word of God. No? You will not keep it by yourself and then um, you will like one tamad, no waiting. You're waiting for that. Uh, to, to fall down. No, like... Uh, the lazy jan. Wait, waiting for the guava to fall. Not wanting to go up the tree and take the guava. No. So it's not like that. You have to share in order for your household to be saved. No? Amen? And then at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his household were baptized. No? Again, meaning he and all his household believed. And so, they were baptized. Then in verse 34, the jailer brought them into his house and, and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. When it was daylight, the magistrate sent their officers to the jailer with the order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrate have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now, you can leave go in peace. Verse 7, But Paul said to the officers, They beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. In 38, the officers reported this to the magistrate, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison requesting them to leave the city. Verse 40, After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they were met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. And that is the story of how the Philippian church came to existence. It started with Lydia, who is a purple dealer of purple cloth, and from there, her whole, whole household came to believe the Lord Jesus Christ and were baptized. And even uh, the officer, the jailer, his whole household also came to believe 
and were baptized. And from there, the church grew. The Philippian church grew. Okay? That's how the Philippian church started. And then, in, in the next series of Fridays, the, the message is the principles that are in line in the book of Philippians will be preached by uh, different preachers who will be standing here from the book of Philippians. Okay? Now, our take home. There are lots of take home you can take from the preaching, right? But I only took three. One, believing what you heard from the words of God and sharing it to your household. Believe and be baptized. So meaning, what we are hearing from here, what we are hearing from the Word of God, let us not keep it to ourselves. No? Let us share it to our household no? so that they, they may also believe and be baptized. They may also receive the Holy Spirit. Second, we are no, no longer slave to sin because we are under grace through faith. No? Don't believe, don't, don't think that because you have seen, you are, uh, wala ka nang, wala ka nang pag-asa. Uh, English. Hopeless yun. Thank you. Don't, don't think that because you have seen, you are hopeless. That because you are a sinner, you are hopeless. No. You are under grace. You can ask forgiveness. You can ask for forgiveness. And God will forgive you. And do not do ito any detestable practices as uh, what was said in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 to 12 and uh, yung prevalent nga dyan is yung horoscope do not believe in horoscope anymore no believe in God believe in the Lord Jesus not in horoscope right <laughs> okay Ayun. what happened Ayana Brad. And that's the message for this afternoon. Thank you all and God bless you. Have a blessed day. Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your message. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how the Philippian church has come about. Thank you, Lord, for letting us uh, to for reminding us, Lord, that we should not keep your word, but we should share your word, Lord God, so that not only us, Lord God who will come to believe in you and your words, Lord God. Even our household, Lord, will believe, will come to believe in your word, Father. Remind us always and be with us always, Lord. We thank you. Lord, bless your people, Lord God. Bless the congregation. Thank you for everything. This we pray in your mighty name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. Thank you, Pastor Algin. That that was a powerful uh, message. Praise God. Uh, we now proceed to uh, tithes and offering. So have you ever wondered why we have two hands? Aside from um, they help us work fast, the, the, the one hand is for giving and the other one is for receiving. Who, who, um, which do you think is uh, more blessed? The, the one who gives or the one who receives? Um, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8, uh, according to 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8, uh, each Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So the one who gives is more blessed because he plants seeds, and so after, after a while, he will harvest the seeds that he planted. So how can we give to God? Let's... Um, Let's continue on Second uh, Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. Each of you should give what we, 
you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So when we give to God, we have to be willingly uh, giving Him, not, not under compulsion, not grudgingly or um, not forcing ourselves to give we we also have to be cheerfully giving our god because he's the one who gave us all that we have and we cannot outgive him ever in our lifetime because he owns everything in this world yeah so uh, when we also give to god we have to set aside uh the first uh fruit uh, of our labor, uh, meaning on the, fir on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Uh, as it says in 1 Corinthians 6 to 12, uh, 6 to. So when we give to God, we, we have to set aside the, our tithes for him on uh, the moment we receive our salary, not after we spent everything and what's left we give to God. That is uh, not, not the way to give our tithes. Then when we give, we also have to be, um, when we give to poor, we have to also be discreet. Uh, not like the the hypoc hypocrites in Matthew that he said um, in Matthew. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets, to uh, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth; they have received their reward in full, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees that what is done in secret will reward you. So what you, when you give to needy or when you give to church, small or big, uh, for example, your right hand gives it. Do not let your left hand uh, knows about it. So we should always be humble when we give and we should always, always give uh, our best to our God. As it says in Numbers 18.12, I give you all the finest oil, olive oil, and all the finest new wine and grain they give to the Lord as the first fruits of their harvest. So when we give to the Lord, we give our best and we don't boast and we give willingly and from the bottom of our hearts. Let's now proceed to give. Let's all pray. Let's all pray. Uh, Father God in heaven, we thank you, O oh Father God, for this day, O oh Lord God, for giving us a good health, O oh Lord God. Indeed, O oh Lord God, uh, everything that we own, everything we possess, or our skills, our talent, our money, material things that we have only comes from you alone, O oh Lord God. And we thank you, O oh Father God, that uh, you are the one who sustain us, O oh Lord God, and you are the one who's giving us the, the means, O oh Lord God, to work here. And uh, Father God, uh, for giving us good health and uh, giving us strength, wisdom, and knowledge, O oh Lord God, to be able to, to work here, O oh Father God. Uh, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will bless each and everyone who gives and those who don't... Uh, 
uh, wasn't able to give, oh Lord God, give them, oh Father God, the capacity to give and bless them also, oh Father God. We pray, oh Lord God, that you will help us, oh Lord God, each time we give, that we will have cheerful hearts and uh, we, will, we will obey your commandment as uh, giving is an act of worship to you, oh Lord God. We pray, oh Lord God, that you will bless the companies of each and every one. Bless each and every one also a good health and give us wisdom on how to uh, use these finan finances, Lord God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bedronel, breaking of bread. So, brothers and sisters, we will proceed to our breaking of bread. As the as our ushers are preparing the elements, okay, I will exhort. Okay. Okay, na? Okay. So I will exhort. We will have our breaking of bread. As agreed, every first week, uh, uh, every first Friday of the month, we will have our breaking of bread. Ayo, bread. Yeah, okay. So in First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three to thirty, I will, as they are preparing, I will exhort First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three to thirty. The Apostle Paul said, "For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you." The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. So what we're going to do is we're going to partake in this breaking of bread. Right? So what but before I exhort the breaking of bread part, I want to exhort first, verse 27 to 30. Apostle Paul is saying that those who partake with the wrong motives, okay, or unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning. Some are saying that if you partake with sin, then you will be guilty of sinning. But actually, if you will take this in context, what Apostle Paul was saying was because during breaking of bread, the church is not united. They're not in unity. Why? Because some are taking the elements and partaking, doing their partaking of bread on the other side, and, the, and some are doing on the other side. So, I mean, they are not united. But we have to be united. Why? Because this is a commandment from the Lord. Thank you, sister. This is a commandment from the Lord. Okay? And I will read. In verse 24, this is from the Lord Jesus. He said, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, do we know why the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, do this in remembrance of him? We all know that the Lord Jesus Christ has sacrificed, sacrificed himself for us, right? But do we know that the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus Christ did that in two parts. Two parts meaning, first, his body. He said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Why? Because in Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. And Romans 3, 20 says that, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Meaning everyone sinned. 
So meaning everyone deserves to die because that is the wages of, of that is the wages of sin or that's the wage of sin, right? I am a sinner, so I deserve to die. Because of the love of God, instead of me dying, instead of you dying, the Lord Jesus Christ died for us. So meaning the 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 wages of that sin has been paid by our Lord Jesus Christ. So the devil cannot say, oh, you said the wages of sin is dead, but Jeff is still living. God will say, my son died for him. No, That's why in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, the body was broken. He said, but he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. So he paid the wages. That's why we are not going to die because the Lord Jesus Christ died for us. And that's why he is telling us, do this in remembrance of me. No? This is not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are only doing this to remember what he has done. That he has given his body for us. The body that was broken. I said a while ago, what he did is two parts, right? So now, he paid the wages of sin. But in verse 25, it says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, he's saying, do this in remembrance of him, his blood. Why? What is the importance of his blood? He already died for us. That's enough, right? Do you think that's enough? No, it's not enough. It's like this, right? I will use this again. This guitar is a precious, the precious uh, possession of Kuya Jeb, right? So if I take this guitar, okay, I take it and I smash it on the wall. Now it's broken. Yeah, I, I done wrong. What will be the wages? He he may he may say uh, he may bring me to court and then I will be I will go to jail for it. That's my punishment. Or let's say in extreme, they will say that oh I will I will be sentenced to death because of that. I'm just exaggerating, all right? So that's the punishment. But I, now I'm punished. But do you think uh, Kuya Jeb is happy already? No, why? Because his guitar is still broken, right? His guitar is still broken. So that's why the court will order, okay, Aldrin, I will sentence you to life imprisonment and you'll have to pay 1 million Qatari reals to replace the guitar. Now he's happy. Yeah? That's <laughs> One million, no, mahal naman guitar. It's a very expensive guitar. One million katari reals. That's what the Lord did for us. He paid, he paid our sin with his own life. So literally the punishment of death has been paid by our Lord Jesus Christ for you and me, for all of us. And also because of our sin, God is angry with us. He considered us an enemy. But because of his blood, no, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. His blood is the appeasement. That's why the, the, the Lord our God is not anymore angry with you. Because of the blood of the Lord. You've been covered by the blood of the Lord. And that is the new covenant. The Bible says... This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This is, this is the new covenant that we have. That if we put our faith and trust in God, the debt, His debt becomes the payment for our sin or the punishment for, for the sin that we, we committed. And His blood, that's the covenant. When we say covenant, it's an agreement, right? That if I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, His blood will will be the atonement or that will provide forgiveness from, for my sin. No? 
That's why the Lord Jesus Christ is commanding us, remember me, remember me. No? This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen? So now, brothers and sisters, we are going to partake. So when we eat the bread, we don't think about eating the bread, but in our mind, think about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, that he paid. That's what he wants, no? He, he doesn't want us to remember eating, but he wants us to remember that his body was broken for us, that, his, that he died as a payment for our sin. That we don't need to die because he already died for us. And when we partake the, the juice, and the batok, cranberry juice, when we partake the juice, it represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That when we drink the blood, let us remember that we are now, because of our faith, we are now in a new covenant and we have already received forgiveness from God. And because of that, we are called children of God. Amen. So let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Father, I pray that you bless all these elements, the, uh, the biscuit and the juice, Lord God, that we will use as an instrument, Lord, to remember you, to remember your, your body that, that has been broken and to remember your blood that has been shed because of us, Father. Thank you, Lord. This we pray in your might name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. So church... Now let us take the bread, and I will read. If you can stand if you want to stand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us partake and remember that the Lord Jesus Christ died in place of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In verse 25, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us partake and remember that we are now in the new covenant and we have received forgiveness. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the grace you have afforded us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant in your blood. This we pray in your mighty name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. God bless. Amen. Okay, so... So before we go to the benediction, I'd like to call on Ate Helen. If Ate Helen is there, I, I think. Ay, announcement pa pala. Sorry, sorry. Okay, go ahead.
Lord. So brothers and sisters, uh, additional announcement. Um, when we were at the hotel, it was agreed unanimously to change the timing from 3 to 5 p.m. Now we will be doing our service from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Okay, so starting this next Friday, our service will start from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. So it's uh, uh, earlier so that uh, after the service, there are more time to do what, whatever we have to do. Okay, so that's it, Kuya Ronel. Okay, now let's call Ate Helen. And then uh, we will pray for Ate Helen brothers and sisters. You know, Ate Helen is... Bukas ba? Bukas ng gabi. Okay. So, Ate Helen is flying to back to the Philippines on emergency leave because uh, her mother is sick. Uh, Mami Rosita, right? Mami Rosita is sick. Or was sick because now she's healed. Amen? And uh, uh, so, let's pray for her. Okay, and her mother. And before we proceed to benediction, can I ask everyone to please stand up and let us pray for Ate Helen? Hallelujah. Let us put ourselves in the presence of our God. Oh Lord, our God and Savior, Holy Spirit, we know you are here. We know you are with us. Father, we are not worthy. We know, Lord, that we are sinners. But because of your love, because of your grace, you have forgiven us, Lord. That's why now we have the courage, Lord God. We have the confidence in faith, through faith, to stand before you. Now, Lord, we implore you. In prayer, we ask for our dear Ate Helen. Lord, she is flying back to the Philippines. I know that you know this, Lord. But I am confessing it with my mouth. Because her mother is sick. But praise be to God, Lord. Because we know, Lord, little by little, you are healing her, Lord. From being unconscious, now she can open her eyes. But still, Lord, the... The evidence of stroke is still in her. But Lord, we believe that nothing is impossible to you. And we know, Lord God, we have received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. So therefore, I declare, Lord God, that when Ate Helen come, come back to the Philippines, Father, she will ask in your name, and you will hear, you will hear her, and you will hear her mother. Not for our own purpose, but for the purpose of the witnesses, especially those who have no relationship, no right relationship with you. Father, empower Ate Helen. The Holy Spirit is in her. Lord, we pray that you will heal her mother through and through completely. And Lord, we rejoice, Father. That in the coming days, we will hear the good news from Ate Helen that her mother is getting well and well until she recovers fully. And that you are already doing, Father. And that's why we are thanking you for it, Lord. Lord, we pray that when Ate Helen goes home tomorrow, you will prepare everything from her PCR test that it, it will be all right from her uh, flight, Lord God, safety of her, the airplane, Lord God, that, that she will use from Philippines and even back to Qatar, Lord God, and all the people, Lord, who will accompany her, keep them all safe. Till she reach her home in Philippines, Lord God, where you will use her, Lord God. Direct her in every way, Father. Be with her, be with the family, Lord God. And Lord, to Mami Rosita, we pray. We declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask in your name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You said in your word in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, that your hands are not too short to save, Father. Lord, save her. 
Lord God. Save Mami Rosita in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke all the works of the enemy. We rebuke all the works of the enemy in Mami Rosita's life. Anything and everything that the enemy is doing in her life, Lord, we rebuke in the name of Jesus. And we release only the blessing that comes from you, Father. Let your will be done, Lord God. And we command every fibers, every cell in the body of Mami Rosita to be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we ask healing, full and complete healing to Mami Rosita in the name of Jesus. And Ate Helen, you will be safe and you will be all right. You are with the Holy Spirit and may God protect you. May God be with you from here onwards. And it, this prayer goes the same to everyone, Father, even to our sister, Sister Lisel, Father. We know, Lord, that you are working in her life. You are healing her, Father, day by day, Lord God. Holy Spirit, move in her life, Father. We rebuke any and all works of the enemy in our lives, Lord. We rebuke them all. And we allow only you. You, Holy Spirit, we allow only you, Holy Spirit, to minister, to minister upon us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Lord, I know you love us. It's very evident, Lord God, as we, as we heard in the exhortation, in the breaking of bread, that you gave your, your life for us, that you shed your blood for our, the forgiveness of our sin. Lord, there's not enough words to thank you, Father. Lord, we honor you by putting our faith and trust in you, Lord God. And you, we know, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord God. That you, you are hearing our prayers and you will heal us and you will take care of us, Father. Thank you very much for everything, Lord God. So, Lord, as I read your words, Father, as I release the benediction, Lord, as I release your word, as I read your word and release the benediction, Father, let there be manifestation, Lord. Let your people, Lord God, experience your word. That as I release your words, Father, they will experience this in their life, in their lives. As your word said, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever and ever. Go in peace, church. Amen and amen. Praise be to God. God bless you. God bless you all. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, before we end, uh, there's something, there's a problem. Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, can I ask your attention, please? Attention. Uh, because uh, we have a problem, brothers and sisters. And uh, this is a very serious problem. And uh, so please sit down. So maybe when I say the problem, you will fall down. <laughs> so um, this is a very serious problem. And uh, I need your ears. Uh, but I cannot do this without Atikes. Atikes, please come here. She will tell you the, she will tell you the problem that we are having. So hello po. Ayan, good afternoon. Blessed and afternoon po sa ating lahat. So today po, aside po sa Friday service, tayo po ay may problema. Hindi po siya problema yan. Uh,
tayo pa ay nagsa-celebrate also ng Mother's Day. So, yay! Happy Mother's Day. So, tinatawagan ko po lahat ng nanay, ng mama, mam, mami. Punta po kayo dito sa unahan. Sasayaw po kayo. Sige po, punta po kayo dito lahat. Lahat po ng nanay, ng mama, na mami. Punta po kayo dito. Dito po sa front. Ayun. So, meron po kaming pinagsama-samang message po para sa inyo. So, manginig po kayo ha. Ayan. Uh, to my mom, mommy, mama, nanay. Uh, makinig po. Thank you for raising me to have Jesus in my heart and walk a Christian walk in my life. Thank you for teaching me to be kind, gentle, and devoted. You are beautiful but also have an unfading inner beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. So we love you more than you know. God bless you and happy Mother's Day. So yung po kids, meron po kaming gift sa inyo. So ayan. Sa gift. So, yan po ay house and lot. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day! Oh, wait, we will pray for you. We will pray for you. Sama ka, join kayo, kids. Okay. We will pray for you. Okay. So let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful day. We know, Lord God, that Sunday, Sunday is really the Mother's Day celebration, but Lord, we are celebrating it in advance. Thank you, Lord, for this, my sisters, and the mother of our house, Lord God. Lord, bless them, Father. We know, Lord God, each, every one of them has different circumstances in their lives. Lord, you know them. Holy Spirit, minister in them. Holy Spirit, uh, help them in whatever they are going through. Lord, we pray that you give them strength as they raise our children and also As they, uh, uh, as they come to understand their husband who is <laughs> sometimes <laughs> need extra grace, Lord God. So I pray, Lord God, that you give them the wisdom, Lord. And But most especially, I, I pray that you give them the joy. You always give them the joy, Lord God. We love this, our sisters. We love our mothers, Father. Thank you for giving us our mother, Lord God. And, and uh, we're going to lift them up to you, Lord. Dedicate them to you, Father. Thank you for their lives, Lord God. This we pray in your mighty name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you. Praise the, praise the Lord. <laughs>